Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2015 Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl preview between the Alcorn State Braves and the North Carolina A&T Aggies. And we're going to get this video kicked off by taking a look at my keys to victory. Starting with North Carolina A&T in this ball game, they can't let Alcorn State have the entire field. What I'm talking about, you know the Braves do a great job in forcing you to defend every blade of grass. And if you're A&T, you want to keep this game condensed inside the hashes and going downhill. That's a win for their defense. And also winning on first down defensively is going to be key in this ball game. You want to put Alcorn in a situation where they're going to have to throw the football to win. And speaking of throwing the football, quarterback play for A&T I think will be huge in this ball game. If they can take some of the pressure off to Rick Cohen, the outstanding tailback, it just goes a long way in helping this offense have some success. And in order to do that, those quarterbacks have to come out, hit those passes early, back up the box a little bit, and that way Cohen can have a lot more success running the football. And for all corn state in this ball game, getting Marquise Walford, the wide receiver, his touches is going to be key. He had an outstanding game in the SWAC championship versus Grambling, running the football, catching the football, put the football in his hands. I think that's a win for all corn state, finding ways to get him involved in the ball game early. And you want to stay alive on third downs. The Aggies have an outstanding third down defense, and if all corn can't sustain drives, they won't win this ball game. They're going to have to make sure they win on first down. They're able to get it into second and short third and short type of situations in order to have some success and defensively it's about squeezing the Aggies run game you can't allow that wide zone to work you can't allow that split zone to work force Cohen to go downhill right into the arms of those outstanding inside backers in that 425 defense the celebration bowl Alcorn State versus North Carolina A&T the matchup in this to watch will be running back Darian Ragsdale, a senior, and his sophomore counterpart, quarterback Lenoris Footman, versus that no-name defense for North Carolina A&T. Now, A&T has hung their hat on a defense that's been so stingy, they haven't given up 100 yards in total on average all season. Their average right now is 73.7 yards per game. And we all know what Alcorn State brings to the table. Over 3,700 yards of rushing this season alone. They don't have a two-headed monster or a three-headed monster. They've got a six-headed monster. That's six guys who've rushed for over 200 yards. Ragsdale over 1,000. Footman close to 1,000. Two more guys with 500. We've had five guys this year break runs for over 60 yards. That to me says that this is going to be can you run versus can you stop the run. And in the end, I like Alcorn State to run wild over North Carolina A&T. All right, so we had a celebration bowl to kick things off in Atlanta, Georgia. You had the SWAC champion, the Alcorn State, going against the MEAC champions, the North Carolina A&T. And for A&T, the X factor is going to be limiting the two quarterbacks that Alcorn is able to roll out against them. Both of them are mobile quarterbacks. You got the sophomore in uh, Lenoris Footman who has 961 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns. And then he also has 962 yards passing with 12 touchdowns. So he's a guy that can make plays. And then you look at uh, John Gibbs, he's a legitimate pro prospect. So they really need to make sure that they're able to keep those guys inside the pocket, not allow them to make plays and uh, you know thrash them the way that mobile quarterbacks have been able to give them trouble. So one way that they could do that player-wise is, is with Marquise Ragland. He has 11 and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. He and Angelo Keys, who has 14 and a half tackles for loss, along with three and a half sacks. These are going to be the two guys who are going to be the X factor for uh, North Carolina A and T, rather, going against Alcorn and, and limiting those quarterbacks. Looking on the flip side for Alcorn, their X factor is going to be the running back Darian Ragsdale. He's coming off an outstanding game in the SWAC championship. He had 15 carries, 188 yards, 
was a major factor in them winning that game against Gramlin. So he, he's a guy that's over a thousand yards rushing, going against North Carolina Central, who has the number two uh, rushing defense in FCS, and they're only giving up 84 yards. So the effort is going to be made to to stop the quarterbacks, and they may have an opportunity to run the football. And I think that's where Ragsdale is going to need to be the X factor for them. And what should be a quality matchup between the MEAC champion and the SWAG champion? You have Alcorn State taking on North Carolina A&T. Now. For Alcorn State, we look at John Gibbs Jr., a talented quarterback. You know, he's got some good height to him, six foot five. Uh, let's see if he's able to move the ball down the field and put the score uh, high enough so that A&T can't catch him. Now, he's going to be going against Tony McGray on the defensive side of the ball. Talented corner who should get a look for a team or two. These are two guys to really look out for and which should be a very exciting game uh, to kick off the bowl season. The offense is a well-oiled machine. Uh, you've utilized two quarterbacks this season. You've also utilized a bunch of running backs. So how important is that offensive line? Because I think you guys have a great offensive front. And how integral to the to the team's success have they been all season long? Well, real integral to the success. You know, if you don't have an offensive line, you're in trouble. Those, those running backs don't run for 1,000 yards. And the quarterbacks don't throw for two or 300 and run for 100. The offensive line is experienced, and they've done a tremendous job. Um, you know, we've been fortunate with those guys. A lot of them have been four-year starters for us, at least three of the five. And a lot of experience. They've got a lot of camaraderie, and, and they've they played together. And up front, offensively, there's a lot of communication. And those guys, you know, are very experienced. And that's certainly, you're right on the money. That's been a, a big key to our success offensively. Now, on the defensive side of the football, you look at linebacker linebackers Damon Watkins and Darren Anderson. Um these guys, I, I believe, are two of the more athletic and aggressive linebackers in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. How important are these guys are to the defense and what they bring to the table athletically uh, from both a physical standpoint and from a mental standpoint? I, I think they're both, mentally and physically, they're top-notch football players. Uh, they're students of the game, and uh, they're aggressive. They play hard. Um and they've made countless plays for us defensively. They, they kind of are our, our, our captains out there on the field. Our, our linebackers kind of set the table for us. And, and uh, Damon's been a three-year starter, and, and D.A. is a young man that's played a lot of football for us. You know, we actually have three linebackers. Mike Hearn's in there, too. You know, so we kind of feel like we have three starters for two positions. And uh, But those guys have been tremendous football players for us. Yeah, those guys, 21 and a half TFLs and 10 and a half sacks combined, so that's definitely getting the job done. Uh, now, you've seen continued success since you've gotten on campus. Uh, year in, year out, you guys have gotten better. You won the swag title last year. You won it again this year. Now you're in the Celebration Bowl. In this college football landscape, it's very tough to maintain and grow a program. How have you been able to do that on the reservation, so to speak, seeing that you're the Alcorn State Braves? Well, we've certainly been blessed. You know, it all starts first with our assistant coaches. I've got a tremendous bunch of guys that uh, work hard. And, and, you know, we basically have had some young men that uh, that have come through our program. And, you know, we took our knocks early now. Our first year there, we took it on the team a few times. and uh, But we had some guys that we grew through that. And uh, we were able to get in a couple of good, solid recruiting classes. And that's, that's helped us. And, uh, again, you know, it, it's been a journey. And certainly it's been some, there's been some valleys and some, some mountains and some valleys in that journey. But, uh, you know, we certainly feel blessed to, to be where we are right now. Well, Coach, we definitely appreciate you taking time to join us today. And we wish you the best of luck in the Celebration Bowl, the first annual Celebration Bowl uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia Dome, December 19th at noon Eastern time. Maurice Hicks is definitely a campus legend, one of the best backs, if not the best back in Aggie history. Played there from 1998 to 2001, averaged over 7.2 yards a carry in his career, which is the most in MEAC history. Also finished his career averaging over 140 yards a game. Voted the second best player in all Corn State football history, Jack Spinks played there from 1950 to 1953. The stadium bears his name, so that tells you how much of an impact he had on that football program. And in 1954, he became the first African-American player in the state of Mississippi 
and in school history to be drafted in the NFL. He was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers, went on to play six seasons at the next level. I like Alcorn State in this ball game, and while on paper their offense may look one-dimensional, I think their passing game is very efficient. Now, whether that's John Gibbs Jr. or Lenora's Footman, I think they will do enough throwing the football to where their ground game will take over. That big offensive line will begin to lean on that defensive front seven of North Carolina a and and come away the 2015 Celebration Bowl champs. And as we recap our picks, Chris James is going to be the lone wolf this week going with a and while the rest of us are going with the Alcorn State Braves.